Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. These are five bourbons experts think you should drink. All right, another list for you. This one's sent to us by our friend Ryan. Ryan's a very nice guy. Thank you, Ryan, very for sending nice this guy. to us. Best bourbons for 2023, the top five bottles most recommended by expert websites. This one comes to us from Study Finds, studyfinds.org slash best hyphen bourbon if you want to follow along at home. I love all the weird URLs that we just get. We like doing these lists because so much of what's out there on these lists is unattainable. It's ungettable yes. stuff. And this list is no different. Wait till you see where we start off here. <laughs> Speaking of getting started and doing it in the right way, we are actually drinking William LaRue Weller 2019 tonight, a sample courtesy of our friends, the Whiskey Wimps. So cheers to you guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's delightful. We've been holding on to this for, I want to say, like almost two years. Yeah, we tried this. We actually, this was a backup sample that we tried at Crater Lake on a right, five sip Friday. Right, a five sip Friday. I got so much watermelon on this. I want to go back and see what I got the first time. It's delightful. This is very, wow. very good. Very special whiskey. So thank you once again, fellas. Here's why we're drinking this fancy bourbon yes. tonight. The first one on the list is the best bourbon, according to experts. And it's the Weller 12-year weeded bourbon, 12 years aged. I can't complain. So if you're going with the best bourbons, Weller is phenomenal. And 12 years, great. Yes, and if you can find it. But as we all know, whether you're looking for that special reserve, the 107, the 12 year, the foolproof, it's just not findable. Unless you live in certain states, we hear that some places have it. Yeah, if you live in Ohio or Texas, special reserve apparently is readily available there. We haven't seen it with our own eyes, but it's what we hear. But here's what they say about Weller 12 Year. It's an outstanding whiskey. Mm -hmm. On the nose, it's creamy with a hint of caramel and a bit of anise on the palate. The characteristic smoothness of weeded bourbons, slightly drying and sweet with distinctive tropical fruit notes. The finish is long and sweet. Buffalo Trace makes some of the best bourbons in the world, yada, yada, yada. I can't disagree with it. Weller 12 is great. Sure. But like we said, it's not really available. And when I think weeded bourbons, my head immediately goes to Makers. Right, because they even say in here, if you find one of the above brands on shelves in a liquor <laughs> store at a reasonable price, I encourage you to pick it up and try it. If you find it yeah. at a reasonable price on a shelf, none of that stuff's happening. And you're absolutely right. When I think weeded bourbon, I'm thinking Maker's Mark. Yeah, if it feels like a list that it's like, if you can find it, and then we're gonna give you what you can't find. Right, so starting off here right off the bat, let's make it clear that our list is going to be gettable bottles. These are things that are mostly readily available out there, and we are starting off with one of our absolute favorite bottles. It's Makers 46. We introduce new whiskey drinkers to bourbon with Mm -hmm. this bottle. We keep it on our shelf. We bring it camping. We drink it and share it and love it. $35 to $45, depending on where you're at and where you're getting it from. And I kind of feel like it's a good correlation to the Weller example. Mm -hmm. So if you tried Weller, you can find it. You've tried the various iterations. You always like it. Yeah, good for you. And it's the same with makers. <laughs> like you get the 46, you get the 101, you go and find the BR whatever or yeah, SEA the ones that are named or named after Star Wars droids. Yeah. Yeah. All the all the beautiful toasted ones. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many good iterations of Maker's Mark out yeah. there, but if you're looking for a weeded bourbon that tastes well aged in particular because mm-hmm. the Weller 12, the age has a lot to do with that flavor yeah. profile. But the toasted oak on the makers, especially the 46, gives you a little bit of that extra palate interest, something special going on there. And as readily available as it is, we think that it's the perfect foil here for a weeded, delicious, flavorful bourbon that everybody can enjoy. (laughs) The cat's going crazy. Every time we record. Every time we record. (laughs) All right, number two Mm -hmm. is barrel proof. It kind of feels like the same list we just did. Everything feels the same. <laughs> Elijah Craig Barrel Proof yeah. Bourbon. 12 years age, non-chill filtered. Mm-hmm. Kind of readily available. There are places where we not understand it's not easy to find. Yeah. We can't disagree with this. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof has introduced so many of us fairly new bourbon drinkers to the flavors that we've fallen in love with. Yeah. ECBP still continues to top my list every year as one of my favorite bourbons. And it is usually around $70 what you're finding that for, sometimes less. 
We have to make a couple recommendations here, though. We have to. Let's talk about Knob Creek. Let's. We don't talk about it really enough, but there are some bottles out there that are worth finding mm -hmm. if you're looking for something barrel proof ish. They don't specifically say barrel proof, but at 120 ish proof, you are in that neighborhood. And there are a couple of bottles out there that I specifically like, and they're generally $60, $55. Mm -hmm. We've even seen these for $50 out there. We're talking Knob Creek nine year single barrel reserve and just in general, Knob Creek single barrels that you can yeah. get out there. These single barrel store picks where a store tries several different barrels, picks the one they like, they have it bottled up and sent to their store and then they sell it directly to you, aren't you lucky? Mm -hmm. And our most recent Knob Creek single barrel bourbon purchase is 12 years age. Yeah. We got it for $52. And it was delicious. So good, yeah, and they usually are. We've mm -hmm. had very few Knob Creek single barrels that we didn't absolutely love. So Knob Creek has some hitters in that 120 proof yeah. neighborhood. But we also want to talk about one more, and it's a bottle that some people aren't going to be super happy with us for adding on this list. Yeah, and we're going to not be ticky-tacky about this one. It's Jack Daniels. So we know that this falls into the Tennessee whiskey category, and this is a bourbon list, but I still feel like it deserves to be here. At Honestly, least mentioned. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So even if it's, call it an honorable mention, don't yeah. hate on us for this one, but <laughs> Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof. We have had so many good bottles of this and we find it everywhere. It seems yeah. to be readily available out there. $55, $65. We actually got a bottle of this for $45 on sale last year, which is insane. Yeah. We're talking huge proof, huge flavors, readily available, readily affordable, not too shabby. And if you've not tried barrel proof whiskey or you're a Jack Daniels fan and you've never tried barrel proof whiskey, there's a cat here now. <laughs> You should definitely check it out. So there you go. Barrel Proof Bourbon. I think we could do a lot worse than ECBP, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, and those Knob Creek hitters. Yeah. Drink them if you got them. I like it. So next up, I'm not sure what this category is, but I think it's an award-winning category. <laughs> I think? I'm not sure. So the next one is an awfully weird one, in my opinion. Yeah. I get that this bottle is pretty readily available out there. It's not super expensive or anything, but it's not a bottle that really hits our palates or that we would ever seek out again. It's on the right. shelf right now, but we're never gonna buy a second bottle of it because it just doesn't hit our palates. So this bottle that they recommend is Old Ezra Seven Year Bourbon. And, and yeah. we're not hating on it, but this Old Ezra Seven, we've had it in multiple flights, multiple mm -hmm. blinds, and it always finishes dead last. <laughs> it's not that the palate isn't nice, it's not that the nose isn't interesting, it's that the finish just is not elongated. And yeah. it's been smothered by some other bottles. And we're gonna talk about two bottles that are readily available out there that are in the same neighborhood price-wise and maybe even cheaper that we think are absolutely worth your time. And the first one is a wild turkey product that absolutely demolished Old Ezra 7 in a blind for us last year. It's Rare Breed Bourbon. What can we say about Rare Breed that we have not said over the last few years? It's great. Everybody loves it. We know that you guys love it. Every time we comment about Rare Breed, we get so many comments back about how much you guys love it. It's just a great bottle. I think it's kind of for everybody. It's yeah. And like I always say, like it's good now, it's good outside. It's just good. It is a super versatile bourbon. Yeah. And we know that sometimes the spice can be too much for yes. some people. I'm talking specifically to my brother. I've never heard anybody else ever say that before. <laughs> it is, I think, one of the best whiskeys on the shelf. I am a huge wild turkey fan. and It's not even my favorite wild turkey product, but I still would always have it on the shelf. I like it that much. Yeah, and the Russell's Reserve single barrels are yeah. great, but the wild turkey rare breed has actually beaten that bottle right. in blinds for us. So rare breed, absolutely worth a shot. And the other bottle, Old Forester, 19, 20, 115 proof, 65-ish dollars. It's a hitter. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not as complex, I don't think, as the Wild Turkey bottles, but the palette is very nice. The mm -hmm. finish is lasts a little bit longer than that Old Ezra 7, and it's worth your time. So definitely 19, 20 from Old Forester. <laughs> So 1920 from Old Forester and Wild Turkey Rare Breed. We think that those are some great available options that are a little bit better than Old Ezra 7, at least in our opinion. And I love including 1920 here because I think it has a palette that appeals to a broader audience as well. I just really think it's a wonderful bourbon. I agree. I, yeah, 1920, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, even Old Ezra 7, we don't dislike that bottle. Yeah. We just think that both of those bottles are a bit elevated compared to the Old Ezra 7. Yeah. Next up is a familiar category. It's We're back to the sipping whiskeys. It's such a weird category. But somebody did comment on our last list yeah. when we mentioned sipping and said, 
it's an elevated bottle, one you would never mix, it's something that you just want to sit with by yourself and enjoy. I appreciate that because that made so much sense. Yeah, I get it. And now I think we can actually recommend a couple other bottles, yeah. but the bottle that they recommend... Widow Jane 10 Year, <laughs> which I've only had one Widow Jane, I think. Mm-hmm. Got it in a bar. I don't actually remember if I super liked it or not. It's... I think it's fine. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of blends. There are some Mm, companies out there doing them really, really well. Redwood Empire, for instance. We love their blends. Yeah. Here's a a funny quote that they say about this bottle. The team wanted to add something that had the intense taste of New York in each sip. Oh. What the heck does that mean? (laughs) Maybe it's the hustle and bustle. It's a little smoggy. I don't know. (laughs) I love New York, though. I do, too. (laughs) So I guess we're talking age Price, smoothness, uh, elevated bottles just for sipping. Yeah. So if you like Widow Jane, great. But we're going to offer some alternatives. And these are kind of in the same neighborhood price-wise, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more. But some sipping bottles, things that are a little bit elevated in our opinion. Right off the bat, we're thinking about Baker 7, which continually overperforms in blinds and flights for us. We also like Heaven Hill 7-Year Bottled and Bond. We think that that's a very nice sipper that'll actually save you some money. Mm -hmm. And that one actually beat up on some other bottles in a flight (laughs) just recently for us. So both of those bottles keep winning blinds, keep winning flights. They're very flavorful, well-balanced, and worth a try. And one of my favorites that I always like to put in that Friday Night Pour category is the Bellmead Reserve. There's just something about it. It's so delicious. It's, I think, the epitome of a sipping whiskey. You would never mix that with anything else. It's got a nice heat, a nice punch. The flavors are really great. It has a special place in my heart for it. Yeah, and that would be the top on this list if it wasn't for the fact that it is now a Tennessee-only exclusive. Yeah. Please, please, Nelson Brothers, (laughs) bring Bell Mead back. There is one last bottle that I would throw into this category, and it's a little harder to find out there. Mm -hmm. It's a little more expensive. But when I think of a sipping whiskey, something that I want to pour and think about and really enjoy, it's Remus Repeal Reserve for me. And it could be a really any batch. But we've had batches two, five, and six now. And five seems to have been the best of the bunch. But they're well aged, they're expertly blended, and it's just delicious MGP bourbon. If you've been avoiding that one because it's 90 or or $100, if you're thinking that you want a nice bottle for your shelf, something that you can just sip on and enjoy and think about and find flavors in, I think Remus Repeal Reserve is one of the better bottles every single year. And I like the sipping category because when I think about things that I want to sit and think about, they're always something that has just a little bit more proof, a lot of flavor, things that over the course of maybe you're drinking it over 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, maybe you're watching a movie and you just have one drink with you, Mm -hmm. you're finding something new every single time and I think these are just good options for that. So one of my favorite categories that I like to talk about is newcomers to bourbon. So beginner Mm -hmm. bourbon drinkers. Yeah, and and I think that this is a a solid pick that they've got here. We Mm -hmm. like the idea of a really good flavorful bourbon that's a nice affordable introduction to the world of bourbon. And they recommend Four Roses Single Barrel. And I can't disagree with this because if I look back to where it really started, I remember way back when we always had like Buffalo Trace, right? Mm -hmm. That was really our gateway into bourbon. But when I actually started drinking bourbon, what got me into it was actually Four Roses Yellow Label, not the single barrel. But there was something about that Four Roses profile that was just a sweet gateway into what we now have behind us. Right, yeah. And <laughs> when you're talking four rows of single barrel, you're talking about anywhere from $30 to $50 is where we've seen that priced mm-hmm. out. So we don't really have a great recommendation here because it's high rye bourbon, very tasty, 100 proof. Mm-hmm. What's not to like, especially in that price point? But if you're looking for readily available, something a little more affordable, in my opinion, you could do a lot worse than old granddad bonded. You're talking high rye, you're talking $24, $25, you are talking 100 proof. It's... Even people that say they don't like bourbon, I'm like, just try this one. They like it. <laughs> OGD Bonded has been on our shelf nonstop for the last few years. We just think it's one of the better values out there. You're getting a really solid bottle for that mid $20 range. Mm-hmm. We, again, can't do much better than Four Roses Single Barrel. 
we do find that a little spicy though and maybe yeah. for your beginner bourbon drinker you want something a little bit more on the sweet side either way a high rye bourbon well balanced introducing you to great bourbon flavors four rows of single barrel not a bad decision right there that's a great whiskey and i have to throw the 1910 in there as well this is going to be a surprise for phil but we actually just had somebody at our house that basically said i don't like bourbon and I said, well, you haven't tried 1910 yet. Mm -hmm. It tastes like dessert. It's so sweet. It's not in the $20, $30 range. You're, you're you know, up there in the $50, $55 range. But if we're talking about I want to get my friends into bourbon and they have a little bit of a sweet tooth, yeah, you can't do much better than that. That's a great recommendation. Yeah. yeah. That bottle I've seen in the $60 neighborhood yeah. lately. So it's a little pricier. But if you're just looking to try a brand new bourbon and you're not sure where to start, 1910 is not a bad decision. That's a great whiskey. We don't normally put Old Forester on our list, and now I realize we have two of them. Well, that, uh, that about wraps that up. Well, there you go. Studyfinds.org. <laughs> Thank you for producing this list. That gave us an opportunity to yeah. offer a rebuttal. I think that we did pretty well. What do you think? I actually think the list was really well done. They had great choices in there that I actually agree with a lot of them if they were available. So that was the only issue. Yeah, you know what? I don't disagree with a lot of this. And yeah. to be honest, so many lists online are absolute trash <laughs> that this is actually pretty impressive. Anytime yeah, I, I see Weller 12 on a list, it's hard to take it seriously. But the right. rest of this list, not too shabby. Yeah. So studyfinds.org, we don't hate you. <laughs> We don't hate anybody. <laughs> From wherever we are. <laughs> to wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. This is pretty good, though. I want more of this. <laughs>